When there was an onslaught of pornography in the 60s, President Johnson established a commission to study its effects. After a two-year investigation of spending several million dollars and interviewing social scientists from all over the world, they concluded that there was no evidence that exposure to this material is harmful to anyone. Now, the, the feminists and the religious right continue uh, to make their age-old arguments without offering any kind of support for them at all. I think that there is a cause and effect relationship between pornography and sexual abuse. This doesn't mean that pornography is the only cause of sexual abuse. It doesn't mean that every rape or every act of battery is caused by pornography. What it does mean is that there are acts of rape, acts of battery, acts of violence against women that would not happen were it not for the effect of pornography on the perpetrator. I interviewed a man who was convicted of sexually abusing girls on the bus that he drove. And what he told me is that he would often go home at night and watch the pornographic movies and look at the magazines and fantasize about the girls who he drove to school on the bus. And then he would go to work the next morning and drive the bus and look at the young girls and then fantasize about them in the context of pornography. And he talked about the way in which his fantasy life and his real sexual behavior began to blur a bit. Again, he didn't blame pornography for making him do what he did. He was able to reflect on the way in which pornography constructed a world in which sexually abusing young girls became possible for him. Guys will say, uh, violence is bad, is a bad, you know, men's violence against women is a bad thing. I don't agree, we shouldn't, we shouldn't have all this rape, we shouldn't have all this battering, and it's a bad thing, and, and they'll agree, okay, so we get a consensus. But then we'll say, okay, can we look at some of the institutions in the society that might lead to these enormous rates of violence, okay? It's, in other words, the violence doesn't just come out of nowhere. It's not some genetic thing. It's not some biological thing. And anybody who thinks that it's genetic or biological, all you have to do is point to other societies which have much, much lower rates of sexual assault. Pornography doesn't instigate, provoke, or, or, or provide insanity, you know? When you start bringing them up and saying, okay, let's look at the media. Let's look at pornography. Let's look maybe at the sports culture. In each of those cases, when you start bringing these things up, guys who just five minutes before had said, yeah, we think that, that rape and battering and sexual harassment are bad things and we, we should do something about them. The same guys often are then saying, wait a second, there's nothing about, it's not about pornography. That's not, it's not the issue. Pornography leads to violence against women. How, how would you respond to that? That, 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 that bugs me, that bugs me. Uh, it doesn't. And then they start re oftentimes re resorting to things like, the men who do these things are crazy. There's crazy people. Not everybody's the same. There's crazy people. The crazy people, you know, they're crazy, and they're going to do whatever they want because they're if crazy. If that was true, what that means is that our society is absolutely crazy because that, that means that there's millions of men walking around who are crazy because there's so many men walking around who are assaulting women or who have assaulted women. You have to be a sick one to begin no, with. To it be doesn't matter if, you, if you've got pornography or not. I mean, if you're that sick, you're seeing pornography yeah, in, your, in your vision. It's not helpful or useful at all to think of this in terms of crazy men going off and doing these things. I think, I think the men who, do, who commit these crimes are a lot more normal than they are crazy. That's right. It's much easier to think that it's Freddy Krueger, it's some sicko who's out there cre creating the violence and, and attacking girls and women. But in fact, it's not true. The, the, the average rapist um, looks like me or looks like any other guy. The way the pornography related to um, my, my conviction is just a progression. I mean, it starts out with the age, and the age just starts decreasing and decreasing, and you start looking for different physical characteristics, and had a lot to do with it. It jumped me right into a cycle, um, just started a whole trigger of events for me. And I planned out what I, to be left alone no. with the 10-year-old stepdaughter. Her mom took off to church, and... I stayed home that night and I coerced her into um, performing oral sex on me. Um, I, to sum it up, basically I raped her. All I can speak for is myself and I know that it wasn't good for me. I lived a good life being raised, I lived a religious background. I know what it did for me and it did not help, it just it derailed my life. The argument that there is no proof uh, that pornography causes violence is, is really wrong. And the proof exists in many different areas. 
there have been a great many scientific studies in university laboratory situations exposing men to pornography and then measuring their changes of attitudes, their reactions, their willingness to rape, their willingness to uh, commit acts of aggression against women. I mean, this research has been going on a very long time. And virtually all of it shows that with what these researchers call aggressive pornography, by which they sometimes mean pornography that is violent, and they sometimes mean pornography that is simply brutal, uh, that men's attitudes towards women and their willingness to commit acts of violence against women um, change to the point where they, they are more willing to do things that were unthinkable to them before they were exposed to the pornography. There's another area of, of information that is always um, treated with incredible condescension and trivialization. It's called anecdotal evidence, and that means that it actually happened to somebody, and they know about it, and they will tell you about it. My father began abusing me sexually when I was five. I checked that out with him a few years ago. He told me that it began around then, too. He'd come home um, often with pictures um, of women in um, sexual situations with other women, other men, or animals. I was abused by him until I was 13 years old. And what I realized from, from my own personal life experience and the personal life experience of many, many, many other uh, women and men that I've talked to, there's no question in my mind that pornography and sexual abuse and sexual assault, um, that there's a strong connection. I watched my own father become aroused and get excited by the pornography and then ash out on what he, he was looking at. Yeah, let me show you some of the other ones. The police actually have a lot of proof. Poli the FBI, police in various areas. Oftentimes when we do investigations involving individuals who target children for sexual purposes, we do search warrants and find various kinds of pornography in their residence or hidden away at some other location. On September 4th, 1998, I was assigned as the lead investigator in the homicide of Elizabeth Sinclair. Elizabeth was five years old and she was strangled to death by her 17-year-old babysitter, David Case. In the investigation, we learned that David Case had over 700 sexually explicit images that he had downloaded off the internet. Elizabeth was my five-year-old daughter who was raped, sodomized, and then strangled by her 17-year-old babysitter who was um, a friend of the family. We had known him since he was three years old. I think probably one of the biggest contributing factors to what happened was um, through the course of the investigation, they found out that he was real heavy into child pornography um, and other forms of pornography. In David Case obtaining the photograph of the victim, Elizabeth, and placing it in with other uh, hardcore pornography, child pornography pictures, he began fantasizing or he was placing her in the same category as he was, uh, as these other photographs. So he was fantasizing about um, committing those acts with Elizabeth at that time. So I truly believe that if pornography wasn't involved, if David didn't have access to it or the, the free access through the internet to the pornography, uh, there's a good chance that this homicide would not have occurred.